Hello, everybody. My name is Radovan. Hi, everybody. My name is Anne. And uh, we work on the Code Economy project. And in this series of short videos, we give a flash introduction into the lessons. And in this one, we will give you an overview over the Git collaborative, so collaborative distributed version control with Git. And we teach this lesson because um, because we 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 are not working in isolation. So even and even if so, it's about. Uh, collaborating within a research group in Git, but also even if you work alone, maybe you want your project to be reusable later and you want to share it with the community. So here we want to give uh, give everybody the tools and the workflows. And we know that uh, Git novices often struggle with um, concepts and models like what is a remote, what is a fork, origin, pull requests, which has really unnailed, so it's not very intuitive uh, why this is called pull requests and how that works. And um, so we, we are trying to clarify these concepts. And really, uh, a core part of this lesson, in my opinion, is a code review. So being able to review changes, so submit change proposals, and being able to review these changes and discuss these changes together. And not only for the code quality, but also for collaborative learning. Yes, you're right. And I, I think the important part is probably to highlight this is not only technical, this lesson. So yes. we don't only teach how to do it technically, but we would like uh, the learner to understand this is part of the ecosystem of collaboration on software. Um, so we take GitHub as an example, but we could do it with other tools. Yeah, I think in the, yeah so uh, in the first episode, I don't remember if there is anything to, oh yes, there is this very nice features on uh, how to explain the different things when we do cloning, uh, forking, etc., which is very confusing. Mm -hmm. And this what is was super nice is that uh, this picture was contributed to us as a pull request after one of the workshops. So that felt really nice. Yeah, and, typical and example of uh, how to collaborate to uh, another project. So mm -hmm. it was uh, excellent. Yeah, and really uh, the point to uh, what you said is that it's really not about, not so much about the tool, it's about the approach and about really the, the workflow. And again, it's about giving the confidence to be able to collaborate using these different approaches. Yeah, so uh, we, we show like two main approaches, like this centralized workflow uh, and this distributed version control and forking workflow to show a bit like the two different ways to work collaboratively. And in both of them, uh, the main part is exercises. So we, we explain at the top what, uh, what this workflow means in terms of uh, collaboration with Git. But the most important is mostly the exercise. And this is the same with the, your next episode. Um, make sure you don't skip. Sorry. Oh, yeah. uh, and the, these exercises, they are done in groups. Yeah, um, good point. On both, on both in person and, and online. Um, and then, as you said, we really hear the maximize and exercises. There are very few to none type along parts. It's more about a bit of a flipped classroom setting where we start out with the exercise and later we discuss and answer questions about them. Yeah, and in the exercise, uh, especially when we do it online, we, we, we tend to maybe not to spend enough time explaining uh, the expected outcome of the exercise. So in a face-to-face -face workshop, it's uh, easier to correct because people will not be in a breakout room. But in a real uh, um, online workshop, make sure you spend enough time explaining well, what is expected in the exercise. And uh, that is not about uh, the technical things, being able to uh, uh, write in the other uh, repository. It's very important to understand the review process uh, and that you can annotate and uh, give uh, advice and uh, uh, help the person to, to progress and to learn to improve the coding. I think it's super important. Yes, we really try to show how uh, how the Git repository, but also how the issues and the discussions yeah. and pull requests, how they nicely integrate. 
And this is probably can... more in the next one. Sorry. Yeah, right. This is yeah, you're right. This is in the distributed one. So how we can cross-reference these. So what is happening here in the distributed one? We there we work with a fork, forking workflow. Yeah, so I go up and, too fast. Uh, and the exercise goes in two steps. So we contribute to our collaborative uh, group repository. But then, uh, then in the second step of the exercise, the goal is to, to update the fork. And also this is something that in my experience, really many newcomers well, have to get used to. But then we try to show that it's, it can be done in two commands, but we also try to give really the understanding of what is happening. Yeah. And this is really here where we introduce a notion of pull request and uh, uh, really uh, uh, this is usually quite new for many people, even if they have used Git and GitHub. Uh, and this review process is uh, something they are not very well aware. And this is what you were mentioning, update your form. Uh, it's, it's worth maybe even if you have time to show it uh, in the main uh, classroom when you, you do it online because some uh, learners will skip it because they will not have time uh, and uh, they, they may get into trouble later on. In terms of uh, last one, very important, how to contribute changes to somebody else's project. Um, so this one is, uh, I think it's, it's nice in this one if, uh, if we add examples on um, yeah, we should project you have contributed. Sorry. Yeah, good idea to to add real life examples because here we try to tie these uh, episodes together and give really advice on in different situations. Yeah, and I think this what is nice is uh, uh, that uh, open the open software. Uh, usually, they know many. They use many in their day to day research work, but they don't necessarily think they can really contribute. And contributing can mean entering an issue if they spot a problem. And this is uh, something nice to, uh, to highlight. Yeah, we should really, uh, I think, highlight it better that uh, after, after this lesson, everybody should have really the tools and the knowledge to be able to make suggestions to, in principle, any open source project and even suggest changes. And I think that's it. We have two final, uh, two final episodes, which usually we don't have time to go through. It was nice to have, but um, mm. probably need more thought on how to use them for learners on their own. It's, it's probably a bit difficult. Yeah, they are a bit disconnected and it's more like a reference to look it up, but we don't really go into these uh, <laughs> optional, optional lessons. I think what we can also improve uh, is that we add more exercises for those, for the more experienced uh, participants. Yes. I think those who are already used to, to basic uh, code review pull requests, we could offer additional optional exercises. Yes, that's a good point, yes, because we always have a few that are uh, finished very early. Yeah. And that's it. All right. Always well, welcome uh, contribution, probably. Yeah. Yes. So now that uh, participants know how to contribute changes, we also welcome <coughs> ideas and contributions to to this lesson material. Thanks for thanks for listening and watching. <laughs>